morning. How's everybody doing today? Uh, the sun is shining, um, and it is a super uh, wonderful day uh, to see all the snow uh, melting. You know how you feel when you, like, have to listen to yourself and you have to watch yourself, and you're like, oh, my gosh, not again, uh, not again. So let's see. I can make this thing work here. There we go. Okay. So believe it or not, I am, my name is Rachel Stone, and I'm, I'm very happy to be here. Never thought I would be here because I'm an introvert. I know that may be hard to believe. Um, and so these gifs here, they represent how I feel right now. A lot of times when I'm, when I'm asked to speak, I feel like that, that first one, you know, young and from home alone, and it's like, oh my God, no. But when I think about life being about purpose, um, it, it, it changes. Today is not about me, and I want to preach to you. I may, you may not even hear anything that you you've heard, haven't heard before. I just want to inspire you. And if I can inspire one person today to leave out those doors a different way than what they walked in, maybe you're, you're at a crossroad in your life. Maybe you have an idea that you're thinking about, you know, moving on. Maybe you're in between career choices. Maybe you're thinking about starting a business or leaving a job. Whatever it is, if I can inspire you to go out and make it happen, then my job is done. I'm super excited to be here to talk about inclusion because it's a big part of who I am and the work that I've done in the community. Inclusion to me, the term, it captures unity. And in, in, in one word, it means all embracing. So we know society, and, and social media, you know, has a big influence on who we are. It paints a picture of what success is, how we should act, what we should wear, who we should be friends with, what we should follow. But what about everyone else who just wants to be themselves? What about all the unique, different, distinctive, and creatives? So here's a picture that represents Rachel. I am a woman of many hats. I, I have many different roles. And all these rep the hats represent the, my different personalities, um, different roles. Now, don't get me wrong, I haven't been diagnosed with multiple personality disorder. But there are different times where I will pull out different hats so that I can make an impact in the community. Inclusion. I have to take you down memory lane a little bit here just to tell you how I got here. Because I get asked the question a lot. How in the world did you get here from all the way from the heart of Chicago to Fargo, North Dakota? How did you become Mrs. North Dakota? How is it that you started a business, a nonprofit with, with no money, and why did you choose to work with kids? How did you make such an impact in both Fargo and Moorhead schools when you weren't even a teacher? And how in the world did you run a campaign with no experience? And honestly, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't know. But there are a few things that I've learned in my journey, and I just want to share with you. So I started in a family. I'm a PK, as you heard in my bio. I'm a pastor's kid. And I was born into a family of five. Very, 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 very uh, religious. We couldn't wear pants and no makeup. Couldn't listen to secular music. None of that. Or you were going down to a place far below. Also, we were really, really, really involved in the church. Every Monday night for Monday night prayer. Every Wednesday for Bible study. Every Friday for youth service. Saturday was choir rehearsal, and Sunday was, was morning service, which would eventually turn into two services because we had missionary service. There were lots of expectations on me. How many firstborns do we have in the crowd? Yeah. So you understand where I'm coming from. Lots of expectations that was placed on me. I had to represent the, the, the church, and, and I, I couldn't do any wrong, and I had to be the perfect example for, for my sisters and brothers, you know. And, and so I had a lot of expectations ahead on me, and it, it, it bothered me. I developed this sense of, of being afraid to fail. I, did, I didn't want to let anybody down. 
And I always ask the question to God, because I was born in church, you know, Lord, why, why me? You know, why is this my life? Why, I just want to be normal. How come I can't uh, participate in after-school after activities? We weren't allowed to, to go to the school games and, 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 and be part of theater and, you know, different uh, speech. We, I had such a different life, and it, it really took a toll because I wanted to be accepted for who I was, and I didn't want all the responsibility that I had on my life. But even though I hated to go to church, and I didn't get along with my dad, one thing he taught me that stuck with me throughout the years, always pray, and that life is about purpose and helping others. And that always stuck with me. So inclusion to me, it means not being afraid to face your fears and step out of your comfort zone. So I, so I got married. This is my family. I got married. I got, had kids. And a few years later, I moved to Fargo. The Arctic freeze. <laughs> the Arctic freeze. I never thought I'd end up uh, in Fargo. The Arctic freeze. And I felt myself, again, those, those feelings of uh, not knowing anyone, being alone, uh, by myself, the depression, stuff uh, that I was dealing with. I felt that tried to creep up on me. But I always learned that when I took the focus off myself and got involved, that always did the trick. So I started volunteering at different organizations. I took a liking to, to head start and get involved in my child's um, education. I joined the parent committee there, and, and I, I became part of United Way and just giving back. And it was at one of those organizations that a local agency saw me and asked me to run. Um, not run, but to, to, be, to model at their agency. I'm like, really, modeling me? So I started modeling, and, we start, and I did a show at the Fargo Dome. And the state directors of the international pageant saw me. And they asked me, you know, we, th we think you should run for Mrs. North Dakota. And I'm like, really? I, uh, me? No, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't, I don't have any pageant experience. I, I, I don't know anything about pageants. But I had a love for young people. Because it doesn't take a lot. All it takes is a heart for someone else. So I saw it as a perfect opportunity and I ran for Mrs. North Dakota, and I lost. But it taught me tons of things about who I was. It showed me a lot of things about who I was, my strong and weaknesses, and it made me confident. Because remember, I told you I was afraid to fail. Well, not anymore. I ran again. And wouldn't you know it, I won. I could not believe it. I, I, be, I, be, I made history when I became Mrs. North Dakota. Oh my God, life just took off for me. Doors all over the place started to open. And, and, and I, was, I wowed myself. I had opportunities to, 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 to travel and to speak at the parades and, 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 and do lots of things in the community. But it was the schools that really made a difference. I saw myself in those kids. I, I found my purpose. My purpose started to, to come more to the light. Oh, but I'm doing my thing. I'm modeling, and I'm, I'm looking good now. I, I'm, I'm living the dream. I, I always wanted to travel and model. Um, it, when I was young, I, I, I started traveling. I went to Florida, and, and then one, next month, I was in Atlanta for a show, and, and then Chicago, and even made it all the way to Hollywood. Inclusion is not just a they issue. It's an us issue. I still felt this emptiness inside. Even though I was living the dream, nothing compared to that feeling I had when I was in the schools. Inclusion also means losing your ego. Okay, so I needed to get into the schools. I have to, I have to get that feeling back of making an impact. So I applied for a job at Madison Elementary, actually just for the Fargo Public School System, and no jobs became available. But all of a sudden, there was a job that did come available. Do you know what it was? The lunch lady. So I said, oh my goodness, there's a job they're hiring for a lunch lady. And I, I started to weigh this thing, hmm, lunch lady, Mrs. North Dakota. I don't know if Mrs. North Dakota should be, 
you know, hmm. Let's see, uh, mopping floors, Mrs. North Dakota, traveling, wiping tables, serving nuggets and fries, uh, traveling, eh, I don't know if I, but I did. I ended up becoming the lunch lady um, because it wasn't about my ego. That didn't matter anymore. I knew that I had found my purpose in helping those young people, so I did. And that was the greatest decision that I, could, that I, that I made because my, my purpose was really discovered. I began just, I really began to see myself in those children and just speaking kind words. I remember going to school and there were many days, and my dad shares this in his messages now. I've talked to him about, talked to him about it. And I said, Dad, can I share a little bit of, of our, our history? And there were several days when I went to school and I, and I had a busted lip and my, because my dad had got upset. I saw myself in those kids. There were, I recognized that our kids were hurting. And so I began to just encourage them. Honey, it's going to be okay. And, and Miss Rachel loves you. And, and there's hope for you. And, and the, the, the boys were superheroes, right? And, and the girls were princesses. And I would call them all that. And they're like, Miss Rachel, you're so beautiful. Even in my, the bonnet that I had on, I was still beautiful. And I'm like, really? Okay. Okay. And so, yeah. And the boys, you're going to be strong superheroes. Eat your vegetables. And I got called to the principal's office. I'm like, oh my God, I'm in trouble. What have I done? And he's like, oh, no, 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 Miss Stone, come on in. I just wanted to let you know that the fourth and fifth graders came in and they had a talk with me. And he said, anyone that can get through to that bunch of kids, they're a tough bunch, but if you can get through to them, you, you deserve a job. They've asked me to hire you and we wanna hire you as a para. Would you accept the job? And that was my beginning into the school system. The power of impact. The power of impact. So I knew that I didn't get to where I was by pretending, but I, was, I made an impact because I was being real. Inclusion is about being real. It's about sharing the imperfections. It's about helping and mentoring our kids and letting them know that they don't, they don't have to be perfect, that we all make mistakes. I worked there three years. And then I knew that I was onto something. I had to start P's and Q's. I saw the struggle in the classroom between the teachers. And so I created P's and Q's. As you saw in the video, P's and Q's honestly is about equipping our kids with the knowledge and skills so that they can reach their daily uh, activities, where they can manage their daily activities and reach their goals. So I started. I started P's and Q's in the lower level of our, of our church. We want our kids to, to, to thrive. We want to help identify those, those talents and gifts that they all have and build their, safe, build their self esteem. So we created a safe haven for them. Inclusion is not being afraid to start, even if it's not perfect. We started in our church, and you know how I feel about churches, but I had to start. I started with two kids in the basement of my church. That grew to six kids. Six kids grew to 20 kids. And then I knew I wanted to reach more children. But I didn't have the money. And what about the children who didn't step foot inside of a church? Inclusion is not letting what's never been done prevent you or stop you. I went to the FM Area Foundation and I said, this is the impact we're making in the community. I need some money. I, 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 we we, we, we want to grow. We want to reach more kids. And they said, I said, but I don't have a 501c3 yet. I'm going to use my church as an umbrella. They said, hmm, well, we've never given a grant to a church before. And I said, well, it can't hurt to try. So I did. I wrote that grant. I submitted it. And the FM Area Foundation Women's Fund gave me my first $1,000. Each year that continued to increase, which hallelujah, it allowed us to open up our own downtown Fargo, our own safe haven and space for young girls. My dream was real. But what about the kids who didn't come to my space, who weren't have, didn't have transportation or didn't know that Peace and Cues was there? Inclusion is about finding a common cause for an important work that cannot be done effectively or have the greatest impact if we separate ourselves from each other. 
I had to get into the schools. So what did I do again? I, I knocked on the doors. And Fargo Public School says, mm, well, we have our own, we have our own programs already. We have, we have Charism, Boys and Girls Club, and the Y program, so we're going to pass. I said, well, maybe I should take this to Moorhead Schools then. So I did. I took it to Moorhead Schools, but I had to get in first. So again, I took a job as a lunch supervisor. And again, that was what a, what a wonderful opportunity it was to build relationships. A year later, I was promoted to student support services. And as you can see, I wore many hats. Yes, I, I'm, I, was, I was very bold. I was doing my thing. I had walkie-talkie and, and my earpiece, and I would walk those halls, and I was building relationships and making sure everyone was safe. I worked in conjunction with the staff, and so they, were gave, they gave me my classroom. And, and my job is, was, was to, to help those students who were kicked out of class, need refocusing, ISS detention. They would come spend that time with me. And I was able to talk with them and, and help them to make better choices and get down to the root of those issues that were uh, preventing them from getting the benefits of their education. I was given my own classroom. The kids started to purposely get kicked out of class just so they can come down to that classroom. I'm like, oh no, this, this is going wrong. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna get in trouble here. No, this can't this can happen. We even had to put a lock on the door just to keep them out of there. I said, okay, we can visit before, before class. So I had them draw pictures and, of their goals, and I said, okay, before school starts, come on down to my classroom, and we'll have some snacks, and we'll talk, and we'll get your mind prepared for the day, and who you're gonna combat, how to combat and, and deal with those issues, you know? But that wasn't good enough. They were, now they were getting passes, bathroom passes, just to sneak to the classroom. I mean, it, I, I said, I, I have to do something here. I went in, I had a talk with the principal. This is it, Principal Larson. P's and Q's, this is an organization or a program, it's a preventative program, help our kids reach their goals. I want to start it here, here at, 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 at Horizon. And he says, you know what? We need it, come on in. Our program, we started with seven girls. It grew to, 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 to 38 girls, and we were busting out of there. So we were able to partner with, with community education so we, uh, to offer classes and programs um, through the school system for elementary, middle school, and high school girls. Peace and Cues is about leading. It's about encouraging and empowering our young people to lead, to step up, and share their gifts and talents. But we knew we had to be creative in order to make this impact, especially when it comes to young people. So I had an idea. Why not create a venue for them to shine? A role modeling show. The role modeling show is simple. It's, it's about using your talents and your gifts to impact others. So our young people, I had our, our elementary girls, they dress up in their career wear because it's about planting seeds, helping them to see what they can be. Our seventh, eighth grade, ninth grade, 10th grade, all of our participants give, they, they give uh, presentations on their leadership skills that they've learned. It could be a dance, an uh, inspirational dance. It could, it could be uh, dreams. It could be a bullying skip, dream boards, whatever it is that they want to share with the community. And then we pick women from all walks of life to celebrate and say, thank you for what you're doing in our community. Please don't change. And we honor them. Remember, I told you that back at school, we had lots of students who were, who were getting in trouble purposely to get down to the classroom. And I noticed that 90 plus percent were our male students. They were coming in and they were saying, Miss Rachel, you don't care about us because you got a program for the girls and you're doing all this stuff for them, but, but what about us? Don't, don't, don't you love us? Then the light clicked on. Having three sons finally started to make sense, you know. I didn't understand. I prayed for girls, and God gave me three blessings, my boys. But it started to make sense because the boys were, I was Mama Rachel to them. 
I had to consider myself, I'm a girly girl, I'm a pageant girl. I don't know about those boys, but they were the ones asking for a program. And having three sons made sense because I had raised them. I knew the obstacles. I knew the challenges. And so I decided, you know what, we, we need a program just as much for our boys as we do for our girls. So we launched a program, the leaderboard, we, where, we, we, where we partner with, with mentors and, and just males in the community we were able to launch a, a program for our boys. Inclusion is about being bold and doing what others fear to do. Now came the toughest decision. Beginning of last year, I decided, I decided that it's time for me to go. I had set out to accomplish big things or make an impact in the school system. And P's and Q's was doing wonderful, and I was working with the school staff, and they had me on speed dial, and Rachel, whatever it is you're doing, it's, it's working. Our boys are, 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 you know, our boys and girls are less into the reports, the academically grades are picking up. It's working great. I was doing good, but I started to find myself getting burnt out. And a lot of times we, we have to learn how to say no or when to know when to pull back. I was everything, P's and Q's, I was the, the curriculum, and I was event planner, social media, and I was meeting with kids before school, during school, and after school, it was me. And I said, I, I have to go, I have to go. But it was tough, it was very tough. We had to focus on more on P's and Q's and building that. But financially, I didn't know. Eventually, I did, I decided, I decided to leave. So inclusion is about change. Sometimes we have to make those tough changes. So a parent came to me and she says, Rachel, we love what you're doing in the community. Um, we want you to run for school board. No, ma'am. I, 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 just, I just decided you know, to leave the school system, my full-time job, and P's and Q's is, 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 is doing well, and we're making our impact, and I don't, I don't, think, I, I don't think I should. But I knew that I had, I had heard the cry, and, the, and I saw many needs in the school system. I knew the changes needed to be made, in, and I knew that I needed to do more. So I prayed about it, as I, I always do, and I talked with my husband and those that I counsel with, I decided to run. And it was one of the toughest challenges of my life to knock all those doors and to ask people to vote for me. And, and, and I was new. I had lived 13 years in Fargo and, and just two years in Moorhead. And people really don't know me. And I don't think I can do it. And I have no experience in running a campaign. But here we are. I ran and I won. Inclusion in my, in my conclusion, Inclusion is about sharing our gifts, our talents, our abilities with the world. So I grew up singing in the church and I loved to sing. I heard a melody in a dream one night. And two weeks later, I went into the studio. I created a, a single, recorded it, put it on iTunes and such. It was a young girl who said, Miss Rachel, I listened to your single. I listen to your song every night before I go to bed. And when I'm feeling the loneliest, I'll pull it up and I'll, and I'll turn it on. And that let me know that I'm doing something right. Sometimes you have to be creative. And if you're a mother, you're a father up the, out there, we all love our children. We all want the best for them. And a lot of times it doesn't matter how that light bulb clicks on. We want it to click on. We don't care how. We want our kids to be successful, to thrive, to be empowered. So I created a single called You Are. And it simply says, you are, you are, you are, you are, the air I breathe, the song I sing, yeah, you are, you are, you are. The song I sing, yes, you are. Thank you.